Okay, well, thank you everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for giving us your time. Um, as I said, we just wanted to give people uh, a few more moments just to get on the call. I can still see people coming in, but we're going to get started. And uh, I'm sure the introductions will allow people to catch up as we go. So, first slide, let's go. I'm Anthony Kalanko. Um, I'm the Industrial Product Manager here in the US for Hydro. Um, as you can probably tell, originally uh, lived in the UK, but have uh, been living out here in Portland, Oregon for the last four years or so. Um, previously worked quite heavily on the stormwater and wastewater side of our business. Uh, and the last two, three years or so, I've been working on the industrial sectors uh, with Hydro as we've started to try and grow things here. Um, I've been with Hydro for just over eight years, having previously worked out of the UK offices um, so I've been lucky enough to get around and see a few different markets and, and work with different customers on a, on a range of different applications. And originally, my background is actually in product development. Um, I was trained as a product designer back in the UK, uh, studied for a master's there. But my role now these days is much more commercially focused. Um, but I also find it quite interesting how the, uh, the philosophies, if you like, from uh, good design in terms of really understanding a problem and the customer's needs before trying to present a solution and work through it. Um, they really lend themselves to what we're trying to do in terms of growing this, this new sector for, for Hydro. So a little bit about what we're going to be looking at today. Firstly, I'm just going to uh, summarize who Hydro are as a company, uh, the value we can bring to you. Some of you may be familiar with this, some of you uh, maybe less so. We're going to talk through a few um, numbers that we found out there in the industry, certainly in the, the markets we're looking at in terms of water use and its uh, associated cost, if you like, for businesses. Um, and then how solids removal or the lack thereof is, is impacting those businesses. Um, we're going to obviously talk about the microscreen. That's the main reason we're really here today is to introduce that product and its, its value to you. And then we're going to jump into a few case studies where we've worked on uh, a range of different demo sites and installations. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about our demonstration program and then round off with just uh, our referral program and we'll get more into that at the back end of things. So first and foremost, as I said, why Hydro? Who is Hydro? Um, we started back in the 70s in the UK as a, an R&D company, if you like, um, and that is still a major part of who we are today. We have two major labs, uh, one particularly uh, in Portland, Maine in the US, but also in Clevedon in the UK, where we can carry out a whole host of different testing and product development. Um, to the point, especially in Maine, where authorities, local authorities, and actually other product companies, quite interestingly, come to us to help test their product, even when they're working in similar sectors to us. So that's always been quite interesting. Um, it's something we're quite proud of, and all of our products have kind of grown from the ground up in that respect. As I mentioned at the start, just in terms of my background with the company, uh, we've worked a lot in stormwater uh, and wastewater. We've worked with flood protection and CSO. Uh, we've come back around to industrial water treatment. I think it's uh, something that many people forget that we actually started off with. A lot of the equipment that is now recognized as well-established grit removal equipment for the wastewater industry, that started with us um, as industrial uh, solutions. So it's kind of come full circle, which is quite interesting. And then in recent years, we've also added um, the hydrometry arm to our business uh, where we can give you smart data and we can monitor your equipment for you and help manage that equipment for you remotely. Or, of course, we can feed that information directly to you, uh, whether that be on a handheld device whilst you're out there in the field or just to an office uh, to monitor a, a range of different stations. We have installations in uh, these 33 countries that you see on the screen in, in green. Uh, so we like to think of ourselves as, as a global business, but as you see there at the bottom, we have just around 350 employees. So we're still small enough. We like to think that when you have a problem, uh, you pick up the phone and, and you deal with a, a human being and the same human being or a couple of human beings all the way through the process. And we feel that's a real value we can add as opposed to just being passed down the chain. Um, speaking in terms of the US, uh, we have offices, as you can see, in Hillsborough, Oregon, which is just outside of Portland, Oregon, and in Portland, Maine. Um, but we also like to think of ourselves as having 
a range of kind of smaller satellite offices dotted across the country in terms of our service team. Uh, we're quite proud of how we're able to respond very quickly and have people on site in a day or two when things uh, perhaps need a bit of assistance or maintenance. Um, so as I said, we have people dotted across those, uh, those 50 states that can react very, very quickly to your needs. We've got bases, as you can see there on the screen, uh, in China. Um, we also have a presence in Australia and Dubai as well. So what are we here to talk about today? So we kind of use this as a, an interesting slide to provoke some conversations typically, but I appreciate it's, it's kind of a one-way conversation today. And depending on where you look, um, where uh, sorry, where you look, the amount of water being used in these different industries to produce that end product. It's really quite interesting. It's something that's grabbing more attention in the media. And as I'm sure you as professionals are well aware, the amount of water that's being used in these industries um, is, is frankly quite significant. Um, we've pulled up the, the meat, the paper and the, and the wine and beer just as three good examples um, that we focus on typically, certainly with the microscreen and, and how we can add value to those processes and, and reduce costs. So some pretty striking numbers there. Um, and that's kind of underpinning, if you like, a lot of the conversations we're having with customers. So in terms of processing plants, uh, we're particularly focused at the minute on the food processing side of stuff, um, fruits and vegetables, all kinds of things. We've worked with uh, tomato companies, olive companies, uh, potato, peppers, um, all kinds of different meat and fish, chicken, uh, chicken kill, chicken cook, pork processing, tanneries, um, all kinds of different things there. So it's really quite an extensive uh, range of stuff that we can work on. Um, the beverage side of stuff, so breweries and wineries, but also interestingly fruit juice as well. Um, and then as a, a completely different subsector uh, is, is your pulp and paper kind of things. And, and again, as you'll be well aware, those markets themselves, they're typically broken down into lots and lots of different niches. And that's something we've really learned along the way. Something we're not really going to talk about so much about today, but as I said, just uh, referring back to some of the other well-established equipment we have in our portfolio, um, we do offer a range of sand, grit and sediment removal systems that kind of complement what the microscreen is here to do. So when we're talking about how we can bring value to some of these problems, faced out there in those uh, the food and beverage and paper and pulp industries. We quite often refer to this kind of old adage of uh, pouring money down the drain. So we're going out there into industrial plants or, or potential clients are coming to us and they're saying, we're having a real issue with the local municipality or with our permitting in terms of removing solids um, and dealing with that process water. So they're literally pouring money, if you like, down the drain. Um, big opportunities there in terms of reducing those fees but also being able to reuse some of that water within that process that they have there on site. Um, and even talking about potentially losing some of the revenue uh, that they have that perhaps they're not even looking at right now in terms of that waste uh, waste product that people, people see. So first off, we're going to look at three things, really. First is, is the wasted money, quite literally, in terms of those discharge fees, as I just alluded to. We're letting untreated process water go down the drain and the effect of that can be millions depending on the size of the operation, millions of dollars. Um, the costs are typically associated with the volume of flow, the TSS within the flow and then the BOD or the COD as well associated with it. Um, if we can help you reuse some of that water and certainly remove some of those solids and those pollutants, we've seen many cases where we're able to save thousands if not hundreds of thousands uh, even in a month, let alone annually. So there's a big value association there. Wasted energy as well. Um, typically a lot of uh, alternative solutions, if you like. Um, you may be using a, a huge amount of aeration um, or blowers or chemicals even within your system to try and treat that flow. We're able to do similar uh, levels or efficiency in terms of that treatment without anywhere near as much energy. Um, as I said, certainly with the aeration side of things, we can really help businesses out there. So you, you're now looking at two things in terms of where you may be wasting resources. So your water and your energy. And then finally, as I alluded to very briefly, the wasted value, particularly in that byproduct, the industries we're looking at at the minute, certainly in the, the meat 
the paper waste and, and a range of different fruit and vegetable processes. Um, we're able to capture that byproduct uh, and then either resell it, uh, whether that be as animal feed or as, as composting for the client, um, or at the very least, take that uh, burden, if you like, away from them. So companies will maybe not necessarily make huge money out of it, uh, but they will be able to give it to other local enterprises who will quite literally take that problem off their hands at no cost. So there's three big things there, as you can see on the screen, the untreated water, the excessive energy and the wasted byproducts and the big cost associated with that. Ultimately, what we want to be able to do and something we can do for you with the microscreen is provide an efficient solids removal system that we can also dewater in situ and, uh, and, and get rid of those solids for you before discharging or reusing that flow. So very quickly, we're going we're gonna to go into a, a poll. Um, I'm going to set this up on the screen now. Um, it's going to ask you a question, and if you can just uh, answer the poll, that would be fantastic. I'm going to leave this open for 30 seconds, 45 seconds. I'll get a sense as to when people have answered the question. Um, after I've done that, I'll close the poll, and I'll be able to share the uh, results with you. So take a look at your screen now. I'm just about to launch it, and you should get a question popping up in front of you. The question is, are you or is anyone in your company responsible for working with industrial process plants trying to remove solids and or reuse? Okay, last few seconds. Okay, it's going to close this poll. There we go. And I'm going to share those results with you. So you should see that coming up on your screen now. Okay, so we're seeing uh, sort of 32% of you are saying yes, uh, you are seeing this kind of issue. 36 are saying no, but someone I work with does see that kind of issue. 32% um, of you saying that we don't work in that space. That's all good. We're all here to, to get a sense of things and learn something different today. So 68% of you are seeing this kind of issue out there, whether it be yourself or someone that you work closely with in your business. So. That's exactly the sort of thing we're looking for. Uh, so it's good to have you here with us on the call. So let's talk about that a little bit further. Um, ultimately, we want to know what a plant's doing right now. And we this is kind of really grouping things quite simply, but we're typically seeing it in, in three kind of stages. Number one, they're doing very little or next to nothing. They may have just received a new permit from the city. They may have um, ramped up their process uh, and all of a sudden they're getting people looking at them, asking them how they're treating their waste and dealing with different bits and pieces. So they just see the cost of water and discarding it as, as something that they've always done. Uh, so it's part of their P&L. Why would we change it? And um, we've done it this way for a long, long time. So that's, that's an interesting thing to try and tackle. Um, they're worried about disruption. Ultimately, if it's a, an olive farmer, for argument's sake, they're there to make olives. They're not there to or produce olives. They're not there to worry about wastewater that's not their their main wheelhouse if you like so we're trying to help educate them but also help them find the solution that they perhaps weren't even aware that they needed um also people don't always like to take risks uh, we're all well aware of that especially the engineers on the call uh, trying to deal with clients trying to come up with a solution for them uh, and sometimes they're kind of you know they they are and they are and they're not too sure then secondly, we see people doing a, a little bit of basic screening. This is typically uh, the chunk of what we see. So your side hill screens, your step screens, taking out those solids, um, perhaps not with a, a very good dewatering system, perhaps not with a very good efficiency overall in what they're doing. Um, so they can use a little bit more help to lower their uh, costs and their charges. Um, and then finally, we do see a, a more complete kind of solids removal system out there, uh, perhaps using a range of different 
pieces of equipment uh, such as uh, DAFs or lagoons or different chemical systems. So as I've just said there, we get a range of different options out there, but often they have to be paired to get real uh, high efficiency in terms of the removal rates. Um, so as I mentioned, you may see a DAF or a drum screen together, or you may uh, dose a DAF with, uh, with chemicals. Um, and of course, we're down there at the bottom with our rotating belt filters with the microscreen. That's something we feel we really bring to the party in terms of eliminating the need for some of those alternative options. Ultimately, when we're dealing with industrial clients, there's kind of four main drivers that we see out there that makes them come to us, regardless of the application. They're seeing an increase in discharge consents, disposal costs in terms of literal value, uh, space constraints because perhaps they're they're now within a city uh, perimeter and they're looking to expand their operation. They don't really want to be spending money on their wastewater system or giving up space for it. And then, of course, water reuse. Um, particularly in certain parts of this country, there's a huge onus in terms of trying to improve that. And the cost of water is only going to go up and up as it becomes more and more scarce as a resource. So when it comes down to evaluating how you can uh, reduce some of those costs and, and, and not disrupt your operation. These are the things that we would suggest you need to be looking for. Broadly speaking, you're looking to save or make money uh, whilst doing so without taking up space or disrupting the plant. So you're looking to remove your solids and the, the pollutants associated with that. If you can get water reuse out of it, fantastic. Um, we want to be able to do that using as little energy as possible. Um, if there's a waste product as such, can something else be done with it? Can we reuse it? And ultimately, uh, this is all very well and good, but we need to be able to do this uh, with uh, as low maintenance as possible. Of course, easy installation, small footprint, minimal downtime are all things that you hear uh, as goals for technologies and, and customers. And ultimately, these things we believe we can provide with the microscreen. So, Again, very quickly, just touching on those things, the solids removals, the associated pollutant removal, the water reuse, the low energy, the ability to reuse byproduct, low maintenance cost, quick and easy installation, a relatively small system footprint, and minimal downtime during maintenance. So we're gonna look at a video now, just giving you a sense of how this microscreen works. So you've got influent coming in from the right-hand side, flow builds up on that screen. And as the screen starts to blind with the solid settling on it, you'll see the water level rise, which is controlled, uh, which is controlling that, uh, sorry, the ultrasonic sensor to the right is then controlling the rotation of the belt. You can see the solids moving up there to the left of your screen as that belt rotates. And you've got treated water pouring out the bottom. Now, as solids get to the top, they either fall off the belt by gravity, or more, more likely, they're cleaned by our spray wash system and then discharged into our auger and dewatering unit. We'll get a closer look at that in just a second. Now, with our auger and dewatering unit, we can typically uh, discharge solids down to around 35 to 55% dry, um, typically just into uh, a tote bin or some people will have a third party conveyor underneath there just conveying those solids away. I'm just going to let this run a second time because I appreciate there's a lot of things quite literally moving on the screen. So again, you've got the flow coming in from the right hand side, the solids just settling onto the belt and they start to blind and that water level rises. And once it reaches a predetermined set point, as judged by that ultrasonic sensor on the right hand side, we know that the screen is blinded and we start to rotate the screen and those solids start to move upwards towards their discharge at the top. Once that screen is obviously cleaned by the, uh, the spray wash bar, a clean screen is then sent back down underneath the chassis to be returned for uh, further filtration there. So it comes back around on a continuous loop. Okay, 
So something that's really important to point out with the with the micro screen and, and the technology it uses. Something that's different to uh, say a, a drum screen um, is we have a range of openings there. So let's say, for instance, we would take a 150 micron opening on the belt. Now, as the the belt begins to blind with solid settling on it, of course, it creates a much denser mat there, and we get much finer filtration. It's a really important thing to note. So before we get complete blinding of that screen, we'll actually be capturing solids far finer than the predetermined opening size of that screen. So just something to bear in mind. So if you were to get a 150 micron screen, we can capture well below that, knowing that the actual mat of solids itself will capture some of those fines. Now, of course, once we do start to get that real blinding there, the screen, if you remember, will rotate and we'll get a kind of new clean screen coming in from the bottom and that matte uh, settling process, if you like, and the filtration begins again. But the really key thing is just to remember that it isn't just down to the size of the opening of the screen. We can achieve far, far finer filtration with this unit. We're going to jump in now to a few case studies that we've had with Hydro, um, demonstrations and then installations as well. First off, uh, we've got a poultry cook plant that we had worked with in California. We've installed there. Um, the issue they had there on site uh, was they had a drum screen. Uh, the drum screen itself was failing to protect the, the EQ basin and then the knock-on effect was the, the DAF and the, the biological treatment downstream was completely out of compliance. They were, this was a, a chicken um, cook plant, but also a burrito production. So there was all kinds of different food uh, bits and pieces coming into this waste stream. Um, we came in and we basically said, we can do the job uh, of your drum screen and actually improve the situation. So we were capturing just under four tons, 3.8 tons of solids per day uh, with our medium sized unit here. Uh, and you'll see on the next slide actually, in doing so, just with the ca uh, solids capture alone, not considering the BOD or the fog, uh, we were able to pay for the unit just within a few months, just on the solids capture. We also took this uh, particular case study to Weftec in 2018, where we won uh, an industrial water and waste digest uh, project award. Um, the plant recently confirmed with us that actually by installing the mic screen there, uh, they were able to save over a million dollars in um, discharge credits that they didn't have to purchase in that first year alone. So that's case study number one. Jumping into number two, we're going to be looking at uh, more of the, the uh, vegetable processing industry, particularly tomatoes. Okay, As you can see here, the solids loading was uh, pretty incredible. Um, both in terms of visually here, but also the numbers there on your right hand side. We were able to get fantastic removals uh, with the solids, something that they weren't able to do with their drum screen. Um, we were able to do this with a thousand micron screen as opposed to our typical 158 micron screen. And we were actually able to capture that waste product as you can see on the screen. They were able to resell that as a byproduct as opposed to just having to deal with that as waste. Um, we were also then able to send that water downstream for further treatment where the water could then be reused in their process. Uh, it's worth noting as well that when we capture the pressate, some of the pressate from the, the micro screen, we can send that back through our system just within the unit and keep reusing that water for cleaning. So we're not drawing on more of your, your potable water. So as you can see, some really heavy loading there uh, and some really uh, decent solid removal. And of course, with the tomato side of stuff, really high BOD as well. Finally, the third case study we wanted to draw your attention to, different industry again. Uh, this was a, a paper packaging uh, installation in South Carolina. They were dealing with um, 80% recycled material and 20% virgin. Uh, they had a really heavily loaded lagoon and they had a drum screen trying to protect it. It was capturing roughly 22% of the solids there just with the drum screen. 
we came in, uh, that obviously the, the lagoon loading was far too high for them and they were having to dredge it far too frequently. We came in uh, and we were able to capture over four times the amount of solids with our unit there. Um, and also, just as interestingly, we were able to dry those solids to be three times drier than the drum screen process could produce. That meant we were capturing just under three quarters of a ton extra solids per day there. Um, and they've confidently said they've managed to reduce their uh, dredging frequency of their lagoons by half. They think it might be able to be improved even further still and get it down to a third as much as before we were there on site with them. Um, so the knock-on effect is really important here in terms of the value that we can bring to your process. It isn't just looking at the microscreen um, as an isolated black box, if you like. As I, I mentioned much earlier in the, in the presentation, we can have a knock-on effect in terms of your energy savings, and that can be quite literally in terms of electrical for your aeration. Um, but it can also be in terms of the energy to, to have someone come in as a resource and dredge out your lagoon so frequently. So we can um, bring real value to the overall uh, treatment process, not just this one isolated solid removal side of things. Just going to share up a, a couple of quick graphics now to give you a sense as to how we might fit into some of the configurations or all the systems, the challenges, I guess, the site challenges you see out there at the minute. First off, we're going to show you two graphics. And first off, this is the more basic of the two. This is particularly applicable with smaller plant production. Um, we may be taking wastewater direct from the pr uh, production facility, pumping that straight into the microscreen where we can carry out sufficient solids and VOD reduction there that you can actually discharge straight into your, your local municipality um, for further treatment. And you, you pay a, a fee, obviously, to do that. And then you can have your recovered solids, whether that be used in your process or uh, taken somewhere else for, for reuse or just to be landfill. That's the, the simplest way we can plug into your system. And as I said, this is typically for a smaller flow, uh, a, a smaller setup in terms of the, uh, the process we are treating. That then goes on to a, a more advanced, if you like, treatment configuration, typically seen with, with larger sites, with larger production facilities, um, and also with more complex uh, processes, certainly carrying more BOD uh, where you need that further down tri downstream treatment. Typically, if we're seeing a, a lot of heavy loading, say, for instance, in uh, different meat production facilities, we may see a, a bar screen or a drum screen up front of us taking out kind of this heavy solids loading. And then we'll be sat just after that, serving as the, the real f finer filtration where we can still remove a huge amount of TSS, but also associated uh, non-soluble BOD. So we can recover those solids. We can send them off where it be to uh, animal feed or composting, or again, just for landfill disposal. And then typically we might discharge downstream for further treatment, whether that be a, a settling pond, a lagoon, uh, DAFs with or without chemicals. So again, we can fit into a, a much more complicated and thorough process such as this, as well as doing the more basic small plant stuff. As you saw in the, the videos, the case study, we do offer an optional dewatering, dewatering and uh, water reuse section. You can discharge straight off of our um, our belt, our belt capture, and discharge at a slurry, roughly at eight percent dried solids. But typically, what we see, certainly when we come out to site and we we demonstrate our equipment to customers with their actual waste stream, they really like the ability that we have um, to dewater. The solids there and then in isolation as opposed to having to send it somewhere else. Having said that, in some larger installations where we've had a, uh, a number of microscreens side by side, sometimes people like to discharge all of that flow into a single third party conveyor where they can dewater it in a separate place altogether. So we can offer some real flexibility there in how you deal with your solids. We also talked about low energy use. The microscreen is the smallest uh, version, which we call the MS28. That uses as little as three horsepower, with our largest unit going up to seven and a half horsepower. Um, as I mentioned a couple of slides ago, the real energy savings come down to the effect that we have on downstream processes, particularly with the aeration and the blowers, and 
even perhaps some of the chemical treatment systems you might be using, certainly costs associated with that, even if it isn't the energy itself. So we're a low energy solution compared to a lot of uh, inferior products out there. We can also install into a small footprint. As I said, we're getting more and more customers coming to us now saying we're struggling for space or that space is a premium. We want to be using it to make our product, make money ultimately at the end of the day. So we can plug into a very small footprint, footprint relatively speaking, compared to say a primary clarifier that can be 80% smaller um, than what you might see traditionally and typically to treat those solids. The other really key thing I think for us to draw your attention to compared to um, other belt filters you might see out there that don't have the performance that we can offer. There's two really key things to factor in here. Number one is the size of the screens that we can provide. So if you look to the bottom right hand corner, you can see a range of different micron sizes. Uh, we're the only company out here that offers a screen size below 300 microns. So we can really get down to the super fine stuff. Obviously, you compare that to, say, a typical traditional drum screen, we're getting finer again there. Um, the other key thing as well is we offer a design um, for our belt design that is, is pretty unique, um, unique in terms of this particular application, but interestingly enough, very well proven in the sense that we borrowed this technology and the design from the belt press industry. So instead of having a continuous loop um, belt that you have to dismantle the whole machine and pull out, uh, an assembled uh, conveyor, if you like, to slide off the screen sideways because it's already welded together. What we can do is we can keep everything in place. And instead of taking um, two men, if you like, uh, a few hours to dismantle this unit and put a screen back in place, we can do this with one person with everything still assembled in roughly 15 minutes. And that isn't just me saying that uh, to throw out a uh, an attractive 15 minute number. We've worked with customers who've retrofitted this equipment onto their uh, their units that had the previous design that is, is more common with um, with other technology. Uh, and they're able to change the screen in 15 minutes themselves. And, and as I said, we've borrowed this from the belt press industry. We're looking to feed a screen through the system, attaching it to the old screen, pull it through basically by hand. And as you can see with that image there, on the presentation, you can see that we're then just passing a pintail wire through. So we're connecting those looped ends just with a, a steel pin. It's worth noting, we get it roughly between 2,000 and 8,000 hours of uh, belt life, depending on the application. It's quite a range, it depends on the, uh, the application, um, the amount of abrasion, the amount of use that it's seeing. But also with this new design, we're able to price these uh, in a much more competitive and appealing way. So customers now are seeing this as just a a quick and cheap commodity component as opposed to an expensive and unique piece of equipment. So there's, there's pros for the actual usability, but there's pros as well for the OPEX and, and how you can maintain this product. The other massive advantage this, this brings is we've now been able to install this in sites where perhaps previously, because of the, uh, if you like, the clunky nature of having to change belts and screens, they would have needed more than one unit to deal with their more than one waste stream. So let's say there was a waste, uh, a processing plant that had three separate waste streams with very different solids loading. They may needed may have needed uh, two or three separate units, depending on uh, what screen size they needed. What we can do now very quickly, um, if they can have some kind of equalization tank in place, or perhaps they run different shifts uh, with different processes, we can just shut the machine down, change out the screen to suit the flow that's going to be coming into that machine very quickly, as I said, in sort of 10 to 15 minutes, get everything back online, and they can process that particular waste stream. So there's a major advantage there in terms of equipment sale and the cost to the customer. So we've kind of gone full circle now, coming back to Hydro. Uh, why why work with us? Where's the extra value that we bring other than the actual product solutions that we can provide? There's two things I really wanted to draw your attention to. Firstly is this uh, return on investment tool, and I appreciate um, some of you are probably squinting at your screens right now with the load numbers, but don't panic, and we're going to dive into an actual working example. And this is something we offer very early on in communication with our customers. Um, they see a lot of value in terms of working through different return on investments uh, and getting a sense of how much 
money, quite literally, they can save. So very early on in the initial conversations we can have with sites, we can find out some really simple things. How often are you, are you running this equipment? So what are the hours of operation? And then the flows and, and the solids and the VOD loading associated with it. So I've got an example here that we worked through with a customer recently. So I'm just going to jump into that. So we, we ran for 24 hours of operation, 250 gallons per minute with 2,000 TSS. And you can see down here in these green boxes, you're starting to get a sense of based on some of the, the averages we've seen out there for TSS removal, flow treatment, BOD uh, treatment, some of the numbers here in terms of what that may cost you typically plus or minus 20% if you were discharging into a municipality. And then based on our typical removal rates, regardless of what the application is, we believe we could save you, as you can see here, $60,000 uh, a month of the potential $85,000 a month you're facing just in TSS charges alone. So it's pretty attractive straight off. It gives you a return on investment and a sense of the size of the unit straight away. Now, this has been a really good tool for us, and it's something we'd like to share with you guys and, and give out, if you like, to you guys to use with potential customers. Because once you get their interest, you can actually get into better conversations with them. So, for instance, we circled back with this customer. They, they liked the numbers they saw. They wanted to talk a bit further. And they told us a bit more about their existing wastewater costs. So because they were a particularly large site in this small city, they were getting a, a decent rate for their power. They also were able to tell us how much power they were using per month. And also, because of the way their system was designed currently, they were paying $12,000 a month in haulage. They were also uh, dishing out about $1,000 a month in downtime to fix the equipment that they had on site that really wasn't doing the job that they wanted it to do either. And the cost to do that was quite ridiculous. It was around $11,000 a month to staff those, those problem pieces of equipment. Obviously, you, when you're making those assumptions or you're working with a customer on that, we can add some notes in here to make sure that everyone's on the same page. But this, this information here, so any information we can add is in these blue boxes. It starts affecting a much bigger uh, assessment, more accurate assessment in terms of the life cycle cost. So we've jumped down here and now we're assessing for the annual and we've got it set up here for 20 years. We can do it for five or 10 years in terms of the power, the maintenance, the cost of our equipment versus the alternative life cycle costs. And ultimately what we're trying to show people, I appreciate I've rattled through this quite quickly, but I'd be more than happy to talk through it in more detail with any of you, is that over 20 years, yes, that first year we come at a cost because you're buying a piece of capital equipment. Um, but at the same time, once you get into that five year cycle or 20 year cycle, the annual saving, savings on average compared to the alternative and the cost to, to run with the alternative can be pretty significant. Um, so as I said, we're finding this a pretty useful tool to have. In terms of the financial side of things, it's worth just pointing out as well, we don't only offer a capital equipment purchase, we also offer uh, a leasing and rental options too. So depending on the site and the number of units and uh, a whole host of other factors, we can develop something to suit um, anyone's needs really in terms of what their expenditure might look like or their budgeting might look like. So again, for more information, just give us a shout. We'd be more than happy to talk around that in more detail. Jumping back into this presentation, last couple of things I just want to bring your attention to, as I said, why work with Hydro? Where's the value? Why should you care about us? Something we really pride ourselves on, as I said, right at the start of this uh, presentation with the test labs we have here in the US on the East Coast, but also in the UK. Um, so we're able to take samples from sites, send them to our labs uh, for PSD uh, analysis, um, particle, different particle sizing analysis. Um, but at the same time, something else we like to provide, certainly for the microscreen, is we're able to come out to a site uh, and run a column test for free, no, no charge to you or your customer, to help build confidence in what we are able to do for you. So we can take a, a real sample from a waste stream, just a three litre sample, or we can take uh, a number of three litre samples if you want to do it over a period of time. We can run a test in a matter of minutes uh, using a range of different screen sizes to get a sense of what solids capture we can get for you and your customer. After that, 
we like to then propose coming back to site on the assumption, of course, that we feel we can bring real value. Um, we have a demonstration fleet with a, a number of, of our small full production units on skids. Um, so we're able to come out to site, you're able to plug in your main waste stream or a side stream of your waste flow, and we can actually really ramp up to a decent scale and get a sense as to what we could achieve for you in terms of cost saving, reducing some of the headaches that you're seeing on site on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we can deal with up to 200 gallons per minute with up to 7% solids. And again, because of the unique nature of our uh, screen design, we can run a couple of different screens. If we're kind of sat in between two after that initial column testing and we're not sure, we can run a couple of different things uh, whilst we're there on site. We tend to do this for two, three, four days at a time. But equally, these have turned into, in the past, have turned into uh, kind of multiple week rentals. So I think the longest uh, demo to rental we've, uh, we've had is about 12 weeks long, just because they were so happy with what we were doing. They wanted to keep their unit on site whilst they placed the PA to actually uh, purchase uh, their own equipment themselves. Finally, we just wanted to allude to a couple of uh, projects and, and, and names we've worked with. Um, as I said, some of you may know of Hydro, certainly from our, our stormwater and wastewater backgrounds and, and know the reputation and the quality of work that we have. Um, but even just from an industrial point of view, we've worked with a range of different uh, significant engineering companies and, and uh, institutions across the US already. And that's building as we as we go through a range of different uh, demos and actual sales processes. So thank you. Thank you for your time again, as I said at the start. We really appreciate you being here, uh, listening, uh, hopefully learning something today. Hopefully it was of interest and we'd love to talk more with you. Uh, to that effect, um, there's going to be a survey once I finish the webinar that's going to be sent out to you. And if you can fill out the survey and you're able to refer a colleague or, or another industrial client or um, a different customer, we will send you a $100 gift card. Obviously, there's, there's no point in hiding. We want to grow this business and we need people like you to help us do that. So again, we appreciate your time. Um, and if you think there's someone out there that might be worth speaking to, we'd love to hear from them. Finally, just by taking our post webinar survey, just to get a bit of feedback as to how this went for you today, whether it was of interest, um, if you could fill out the, the post webinar survey, you'll be entered automatically into a draw for a $100 Amazon gift card. And of course, the PDH certificates will be emailed out to you no later than tomorrow. So thank you once again. I'm gonna leave my details up here on the screen for uh, another 30 seconds or so should you want to talk a little further. As I said, those surveys will be triggered and, and sent out to you once this webinar ends. We'd really appreciate it if you could just take the time. And as I said, there is a little incentive there um, for you uh, taking the time to do so. So thank you once again, and I look forward to speaking to you in the future. Cheers.